Hello, my name is Dr. Uluwato B. Terry and um, I'm the Livestock um, Executive Officer here in Afromash. And today, I'll be taking you on better ways to manage your wastes for poultry and livestock in general. So, first of all, what do we mean by wastes in, in the general context? So, I wrote here in my notes that um, waste refers to materials, substances, or byproducts that have to be disposed, eliminated, or gotten rid of because they're no longer useful or required after the completion of the process. Um, so, in a layman's um, term, we would say something not particularly useful to a person or useful to a particular area. And waste can be usable or unusable. So, it can be a source of nuisance, it can be a source of discomfort, and also a source of build up of microbes in the environment. So, we have to know, you know, where our waste falls into, whether to dispose them totally or if it falls into the category of being able to be used. So, we have four major types of waste we have urban waste. We have industrial waste, we have agricultural waste, and we have biomedical waste. But in um, this particular training session, we'll be talking majorly about agricultural waste in relation to poultry and livestock waste. So, um, for poultry, you know, in the process of um, production for poultry birds, there is usually a lot of waste that has to be disposed. There's usually a lot of waste that are generated. And if you don't have better ways to dispose this waste or actually manage them, it can lead to a lot of havoc. Let me just use that English on your farm and in the environment. It can be a, a, a nuisance to the environment. I know about some farms that the people living in the area, that's why it's usually not advised to raise birds or have a farm in residential areas due to amount of waste that should be generated and then the smell and everything and if all these things are not you know managed very well we can be a nuisance even if you're in a farm settlement i mean you should try as much as possible not to be a source of discomfort to other farm um, to other farmers to other farm um, to other farms in the area so um basically in the management of poultry waste, or let's say livestock waste, poultry livestock waste, in the management of poultry livestock waste, I have um, four major topics. I'll be talking first about the litter quality and the moisture content of your litter. So, at all times, just try as much as possible to keep your litter very dry. Not too dry, but at least dry to an extent. Because if it's too dry and dusty, it can also cause an effect on the respiratory um, system of your breasts and all. So, but try as much as possible to keep it dry. I make sure that the moisture content is between 20 to 25 percent. So it's not like the moisture content is, is um, totally eliminated, but at least it's not more than 25 percent. It shouldn't be too low, too, as if it is too dry and dusty, like I said earlier his own uh, effects on your birds so excess moisture when the moisture in the litter is too much it can encourage the growth of microbes it can lead to like it's only what you're doing, dealing with the deep litter system your broilers on the floor the moisture content if the moisture content of litter is so much it can lead to blisters you see these breast blisters and all these things can affect the uh, meat quality of your birds it can also lead to um, scabby areas and then miscontamination. You see some farmers, now when they take some particular birds, so like let me say broilers to um, the markets to sell, there will be some that a lot of people might not want to go for because of the, um, how do I put it, because of the way the bird looks like. You see some birds, some broilers, they're extremely dirty. You see their underbelly side is con almost condemned so it some most times it affects the meat quality 
of the birds. Um, it can also, the moisture, high moisture content can also lead to um, build up of ammonia. And this, the build up of ammonia can pose a lot of risk on your farm. So, the reason why you have to make sure the moisture content of your litter is kept to the barest minimum. Then, dusty litter, um, I was talking about if the litter is also too dusty. The dusty litter can, can, um, be an indicator of whether your beds are dehydrated or not. So there are some times when you can see that the litters are quite too dry. It can be an indicator of whether um, the water your birds are taking in is not enough. So you might have to look into that. Then um, there are some major factors that can affect the moisture content of the litter. The storage. There are some people like after they are done scraping the litters, and then they keep in a particular place where you are keeping it matters too. If you want to reuse or if you want to like dispose permanently, but you've not taken it to the permanent, permanent site where you want to dispose them, you have to make sure that where you are keeping the litter is um, is not too damp and it has to be well ventilated. Then also nutrition. The nutritional quality of the feed, I'm talking for broilers, the nutritional quality is also very important. There are some diets that are quite like rich in excess salts, and these salts it can lead to the birds excreting large amounts of water in their feces. And so when they pass out this into their litters, it needs to you know imagine hundred of them excreting large amounts of water. It leads it leads to high moisture content of your litter. Then the environment where you raising your birds and all the environment can be okay or maybe the weather condition you know in rainy seasons the litter generally will be quite damp and then in hot season it's except maybe the ventilation is not good but in the hot season the moisture content should be shouldn't be that high then um ventilation so i already talked about ventilation i was talking about other factors so the ventilation also matters. Imagine closing the old doors and then you're saying you're keeping these litters for you to reuse, reuse and then you lock up the old place and there's no source of um, cross ventilation. Of course, it will increase the moisture content of the litters and it might lead to other things that you might not, you might not like. Um, I wrote here that the equipment to actually um, help to dry your manure like if you want to reuse this manure because i also talk about like the different ways you can use your manure the different ways where how your litters can be used as um, um, can be reused let me put it that way so there is a poultry manure dryer to dry your wastes if you're planning to reuse them and if you're planning to dispose your wastes your litters make sure you dispose it properly make sure it's in a certified place where maybe it's like a government owned land masters so okay this is where people are supposed to dispose their waste don't just dispose your waste anyhow because if you are saying you're taking your waste your litters litter waste out of your farm or waste in general you're taking your waste out of your farm that okay you don't keep your farm clean make sure where you're taking the waste to you're not using it as i'm you're not putting it in a place where it's going to constitute a nuisance you are putting it in a place where it's generally registered okay people are allowed to pour and dispose their waste so i'll move to my i already talked about yeah the litter quality and moisture so i'll be talking about litter i'll be talking about litter reutilization like how you can reuse your litter so there are some people that during the brooding period they um most most times during the brooding period um the litter is usually changed like as much as possible so once the litter is removed you probably take it to a place where you spread it and then that litter can actually if you actually manage it well can actually be reused for grower beds so you can move the old litter from the brooding house and spread it for a while and then later use it for the grower section because if you actually manage it for it very well it can actually it has its own health benefits too and then the benefit of reusing your litters is that it um, reduces costs and then it reduces waste yeah let me just put it that way 
So the benefits, they are less fresh bedding and then transporting the waste like from time to time is to reduce that if you know how to manage your waste and like reuse them, it will reduce the cost of transporting your waste from the farm to um, a designated area for waste disposal. Then um, it can be used as fertilizer. Then litter is usually drier than fresh beddings, according to um, some people. I mean, they said the litter, if my if it is managed well, it's usually drier than fresh bedding. That can also be used as um, bedding for older beds. And then less labor is involved. You know, packing into sacks to be disposed from time to time it reduces that. You can just you know lay out the litters once pack and scrape from a particular area and just lay it out in the sun to dry up for a little time and then you can use it and sell it. I know of about farmers that like sell in box. They sell in box to um, other people that want to use them because they can be used for a lot of things. They can be useful for a lot of things. So don't just feel like your waste are their wastes and they're not useful. They can be very useful. They can also be a source of income for you by the side. Then um in the long run, it lowers your cost of inputs and it doesn't make up for sustainable business. So, my third point is litter amendment. What I mean by litter amendment is that there are certain things you can do to manage your litter to make it um, less um, less risky for you and the birds. So. Increased ammonia levels in penthouses leads to poor performance and causes health risk to your birds and even also to you. And it's consequently used to reduce the profits in the long run. So ammonia levels can be reduced by using um, litter amendments. And one of the litter amendments is um, acidifiers. Putting acidifiers in your feed, it helps to convert the ammonia and the litter to ammonia. And ammonium is um, very good in reacting with certain elements that um, um, convert to salts and these um, salts can uh, actually how do I put it? These salts can actually like be a source of um, nutrients in the litters so maybe older birds that you've been using the litter for or even the present birds that are on the litter and then another one I know about is lava side. Lava side helps to, you know, it reduces the smell of the litter. It also helps to, um, um, it helps to deal with flies, some certain species of flies on the farm. So it reduces, because you know, where, where there is waste, you will have a lot of flies around. But the use of lava side in your feed, when you mix it with your feed, it helps to reduce some of these flies on your farm. Then my last point is disposal or the reuse of your litter. Like I talked about earlier, if you're going to be disposing your waste, make sure you dispose it properly. Don't just dispose anyhow. If you're using a scraper, scrape it well and clean and then you pack into wherever you want to pack it to. Take it far away from the farm and dispose properly. Dispose properly. Then, if you're going to be reusing your litter, you have to make sure you're doing it right. Because if you don't do it right, you might not actually enjoy the benefit of actually reusing it. So, you have to do it right. Because it helps to reduce the amount of waste that you have to be disposing of actually, if you know how to do it right. And it also saves time and it saves money. So, I have three ways in which you can your litter and i know a lot of people already know this it can be used um, as animal feed there's a way the litters can be processed and then used to feed cattle it can also be used to feed your fish you i'm very sure you've seen farm fish farmers going to poultry to poultry farms to ask for to buy their litter waste like to buy them so Things like this, you can you know make a lot of money from it by the side. Apart from even the birds, you can also make money from their wastes. You understand? So they can be used as animal feed. 
they can be used as fertilizer you know used as manure that is essential for plants growth. that one is very common then you can also use it as foil so it's like hybrid you know the um although most times litter with very um low moisture content is one that's usually used and processed it can be burned to generate energy it can be used as foil you can you know there are different ways to manage your waste there are different ways to manage your waste like i already mentioned a lot of points so once you know your onions well once you like know a lot of things about it and you want to like okay well, i want to do this you know you want to get maybe another source of income apart from selling your birds or selling your eggs you understand you can also do this on by the side we have to do it right now you need a lot i mentioned the um manure scraper we also have um, the lava side we also have acidifiers yes things like that so make sure you um apart from this um, little information i've given you you can also read up about it there are a lot of things you can do with your data but just make sure you do it right okay so that will be all for today thank you very much for listening